Welcome to Guns Gear Network, y'all. Appreciate you tuning in. Today we're going to discuss pellet and BB guns for survival and prepping. Stay tuned. Welcome back, guys. Appreciate you tuning in. So today we're going to discuss uh, pellet guns and BB guns for survival and prepping. And um, now that I'm filming this, this is in the middle of the COVID-19 situation we're in, and uh, guns and ammo are pretty scarce right now. Um, so if you're looking for an alternative, not so, not for self-protection, uh, could it work in a pinch I guess maybe if nothing more maybe to spook somebody but I wouldn't try that so you could I guess but at the end of the day this is more about uh, being able to uh, get a uh, game so to get food right so um, the other day I kind of got online I've been meaning to buy one anyway and um, the uh, my kid had has an older BB gun. It's like a Red Rider type BB gun. He was getting older to the point where I felt like he was at the age of responsibility to manage a little more powerful uh, BB gun. And I bought him a Daisy 901. Which I'm sorry, I'll say yeah, the Daisy 901. Here's the box, and then I also bought a Gamo Varmint. This one is the Gamo. It's trying to get the box in the the thing here. So pest control and recreation, hunting target and competition uses. 177 caliber, and um, what well, that's the two guns you see up here. So the bottom one here is the uh, uh, Daisy, and the one at top is the Gamo. So trying to get those boxes out of the way. Sorry about that. So anyway, um, if you are looking at trying to find an alternative uh, cheaper for uh, going out and doing a little hunting if you had to, now obviously we're talking small game. Uh, they do make uh, uh, pellet guns and things that are powerful enough to take down a deer. That's not what we're talking about today. Uh, they're pretty expensive. I never really got the appeal of that. Uh, I mean, I guess, but they're fairly expensive for what they are. And I thought, you know, I can buy a 30 30 rifle if I want to go take down a deer for about what I could buy one of those for. So we're talking budget friendly kind of pricing uh, type stuff. There's two types of pellet guns for the most part in, in the mainstream of uh, pellet guns. There's the 177 caliber, which is you see here. And then the 22 caliber, and it's basically the size of a 22 bullet. Uh, this is a .177, and they're very small. So there's also a few different styles. You got CO2, a pump, and then what's called a brake barrel. Brake barrel uses uh, usually a spring. There's one of the pellets. Get that in camera. It's very small. This one is the flat nose, or some people call that a wad cutter, um, but. The one up top, the Gamo, when I got it in, I got it off of Amazon, $69. Real reasonable in price. Uh, what's strange is the prices went up $20 since I uh, saw that and bought it. So like two days later, a friend of mine says, hey, send me a link to that. And I did, and it was going up to $89. This one right here, I don't know, it's like $49 or something. So this one's a pump. You, uh, you can load this with BBs. Now, BBs doesn't really, it's hard to kill things with BBs unless you're a really good shot, as far as like a headshot, maybe. Uh, but this one also carries pellets. So this one shoots at 800 feet per second. The uh, Gamma one shoots over, let's see, how many feet per second? 1,250 feet per second. I have not chronographed either one of them, uh, but I would say it's probably pretty accurate. Um, this one's a brake barrel. The negative I can say about the Gamo, both these are really good quality. I really like them. Um, they're very robust feeling. I thought, I know things get cheaper feeling or cheaper construction over time, uh, but this one here uh, is all polymer, even the receiver, but I'm very pleased with both of them and I'm pretty picky because uh, I had one similar to this when I was a kid. This was a metal receiver. It was painted and, um, you know, but this right here is just as good a quality in my opinion. So the Gamo one, the only negative I can say about it is it does not have iron sights. So you're dependent on that scope, and if anything goes wrong with the scope, you're kind of stuck. And it uses, uh, um, 
Oh, it uses um, uh, it's a dovetail style um, mount system. It is not like a Picatinny rail or anything like that. You can buy adapters and things, which might be an option for you. But uh, the scope is decent. It took me about, I don't know, 10 or 12 shots messing around with it to get it dialed in. Once I got it dialed in, it, it drives tax, man. It does really good, and it's really uh, powerful. So it could easily kill a squirrel, rabbit, uh, birds, whatever. So if you're needing game, uh, something like this would work perfect. Uh, doesn't put out a lot of noise as far as a report. It's not real loud and uh, that sort of thing. This one... At 800 feet per second, you better be pretty close. I would use pellets. Could you kill a, you know, I've, I've killed squirrels with one just like this years ago. Can you do it? Yes, it can be done. Uh, the one up top would probably be a little better choice for that. But the next thing is, if you got kids, this gives them something to do while they're at home in their downtime. Um... It's like this one. Um, I'm making my son shoot this one a lot, and he's shooting because he's learning how to shoot with iron sights, and he's gotten very good. Of course, I've trained him over the years, but it's like if it's anything. If you don't use it, you lose it. Um, so he, it took him a little while to get back in the groove of even handling the firearm and, and being able to use his iron sights, but he's gotten really good over the last couple days. So we're getting ready to set up a challenge station. So we've got an archery station. We'll have two stations for these firearms, and then he's into basketball, so we'll do a basketball challenge. So you'll start out at maybe the uh, archery and shoot two shots. You go to the next station, then go to the next station, and then you'll wind up at the basketball station. And we'll do it under time and do points and stuff. Be kind of cool. Me and my wife and him will uh, do that. Just kind of neat. But uh, things like this is good trainers uh, helping people, but it also will help you get game in this situation without wasting bullets. This stuff here is cheap. Um, I say cheap. It's cheap in the grand scheme of things. So 500 rounds of this, I think, is 10 bucks. And like always, I've got in the section below, I'll have my Amazon store where what I bought is in there. I've also thrown in a few bonus items and uh, what have you. I want to show you this one thing on this uh, rifle here. The other negative I can say about the uh, Gamo is it does not have a sling attachment at all. So I've made this work and I went in and bought two sling attachments. Uh, they're little, they're called sling studs and I, I've drilled and put it there and there. The only thing I can warn you about is when you drill it, drill it smaller than it really needs to be. Because if you drill it too big, it's not going to work. I also put a drop of a few drops of super glue or some type of epoxy uh, on the screw and into the hole a little bit so it does not start working its way loose. Hopefully it'll be a solid set once the drew, glue and everything dries. Uh, do not over tighten it. You'll strip it. You'll break it. Uh, just be careful with that. But you can buy those. Uh, they're again going to be in my Amazon store where I bought them. I also bought this sling. I think the sling was like $14. It's really nice quality, actually. I was surprised uh, for what it is. It actually has metal hardware. So these, all these attachments you hear are all metal, so they're not cheap plastic. Uh, nice padded. It's got uh, kind of a grippy, they call it, I don't know, shark skin or something on the back here that uh, keeps it from sliding around. I've added this. So this right here is actually an old M1 carbine. Um, um, a cartridge holder and um, I've added it to here to this so now I can keep a can of Copenhagen in it. No, I'm just kidding. So uh, to keep uh, pellets in it. So what I did was I took an old Copenhagen can and I'll show you if you look it don't rattle. That rattles. So I took an old Copenhagen can and I added this little piece of foam here and then I'll use some duct tape to have uh, like kind of a little grab tab and I can pull that up and then I can get to my pellets you see in there and there's probably 250, 300 pellets in there and then I can put it all back together and then put it back in the pouch and you can keep a handful of them in your pocket. Um, would I ever use this many on a little squirrel hunting trip? Absolutely not. But you never know. You got them with you. Um, you know, again, bug out situation. You at least know you got about 250, 300 of these that uh, is with on your rifle at all times. So get you a little pouch of some sort, maybe, and attach it. You might even find a butt pack uh, for the back stock here that you could add something like this. Uh, anything to keep it from rattling around and, and making a lot of noise, but uh, hold it. So a dip can works well. Uh, again, with that foam in there, I like that idea. Keeps them from rattling, easy to get to, so forth. So that goes in there. 
So anyway, guys, hope that was helpful. Uh, these two I recommend. Uh, I was really pleased with both of them when I got them in. We've been shooting with them for a couple days now, just kind of getting, uh, trying to get his mind off of things. So he watches TV. He hears us talking as adults, you know, what's going on, you know, jobs and all this other stuff. Try keeping things as normal as possible with your children. Uh, and things like this keeps her mind occupied. He's been outside a lot over the last couple days uh, wanting to go shoot. He'll ask me, hey, do you care if I go shoot for a little bit? And I said, that's fine. So we just took some old tin cans and um, drink cans, and I'll put them on little limbs and trees around our yard, and it gives him an opportunity to really practice. Uh, that represents about the size of a squirrel, a, a drink can. So he can go in there, and I even tell him, shoot the back end, the, the back of the can so he's now concentrating on even a smaller spot say try like a headshot so you can do that make it fun do some different kind of cool targets around and uh, just enjoy yourself with it but anyway guys hope that was helpful if you got any questions post those below if you've got one in the budget friendly uh, category that you uh, have used uh, that you'd like to post up uh, what you bought and a little bit about it be sure to do that in the section below again check out the Amazon affiliate store down there it doesn't cost you any more to shop uh, when you buy through that it's just our recommendations I've got a whole store kind of categorized out and uh, you'll see these in there and then you'll be able to get uh, what I got if you want to do that. And I may do a video later uh, of actually shooting these and kind of how that works. But anyway, guys, appreciate you tuning in. If you've got any questions, post those below. As always, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks.